Spanish couple Anna and Mark are expecting a baby. A few weeks before the birth, they leave the bustling city for the German countryside, temporarily exchanging homes with Hans and Olga, a retired German couple. Their house turns out to be luxurious, but it doesn't take long for the oddities to set in, starting with an uninvited visit from a naked Asian woman, who introduces herself as the daughter of the owners of the house, and ending with the behavior of Mark, who suddenly transforms from a selfish and infantile adult into a caring family man. The body is the most precious thing that every person has, something extremely close and in a sense even sacred. The authors of the Spanish-German horror El Cuco or The Cuckoo's Curse build their story around the threat of parting with this very body, not as a result of an attack by a homicidal maniac, but because someone steal it, take it away, appropriate it for themselves. There's something inexplicably creepy about this astral eviction, and it's no wonder that The Cuckoo's Curse director Mar Targarona and screenwriters Roger Danes and Alfred Perez Fargas are not the first horror makers to address this topic. Last year we already saw a thematically similar horror, Suitable Flesh, and many people fondly remember the classic horror movie, The Skeleton Key. The Cuckoo's Curse differs from them in that it adds an unborn child to the story, but if this idea is good is debatable. You know, fear for the baby and fear for yourself are things fundamentally different, and the authors of the movie can't decide which of these situations the viewer should connect to, and although the film quite confidently builds the suspense, the disturbing atmosphere and fix the tension in the air, it does not reach a true catharsis in the final scene. Precisely because we still do not understand what the story was about in the first place, whether it was about the terrible unceremonious way in which personal boundaries can be violated, or it is a story about what a mother is ready to do for the sake of her child. The title of the movie in the cuckoo reference is scattered throughout, from a visit to a wall clock museum to a background cuckooing in the woods, strongly hint at the former, but the movie is structured in such a way, that this story ends 20 minutes before the finale. The highest emotional point of The Cuckoo's Curse is hidden somewhere at this mark, and everything that follows looks more like a prolonged epilogue, which is needed mainly for this story to be somehow more or less rounded off. The Cuckoo's Curse is not a bad movie, it looks visually appealing, and Belen Cuesta in the title role perfectly translates the vague anxiety of a modern Western woman, so used to a safe environment, that she chases away thoughts that something scary is really happening around her. But none of this makes The Cuckoo's Curse more memorable or meaningful. It's a solid but passable genre movie that lacks courage, originality, and a stronger grip, as if the authors were afraid to unnerve or offend anyone.